a little background on me, uh, just to get you, so you understand where I'm coming from, is that I worked with Steve Jobs. Uh, I was his ad agency creative director for four years when he came back to Apple in 1997. And we did the Think Different campaign, we introduced the iMac and iBook and all kinds of things like that. And uh, that was a good thing, but I worked with Steve for eight years on Next, which was a company you may know that he, was, he started when he was forced out of Apple. So basically, I had 12 years working with Steve pretty closely. Um, and you've heard what a tough guy Steve can be, and I am here to confirm that story. I worked closely with Steve, and I, li and I lived to tell the tale. And I think basically the stories you hear about him are very true. He um, could be that tough, but he had a side that a lot of people don't know about. He was charismatic, visionary, and funny. He had a great sense of humor. So working with him on all these different projects, um, we had a, an exciting time, fun time, and sometimes not so fun time. But in the end, it all worked out pretty darn well. Um, I worked with these other companies also, Dell and Intel in particular, that actually were my inspiration to write the book about the power of simplicity because they were anything but simple. We probably worked three times as hard, three times as long, spent more money, and we ended up with a less effective marketing campaign. So it struck me, why, do we, why are we working this way? Uh, why, doesn't, why doesn't everyone work the way Apple works? I think uh, people would achieve far better results. There is no such thing as simplicity. And I say that because every simple thing you see in this world is the result of a lot of hard work. Uh, whether it's a product, a website, uh, an internal organization in a, uh, in a company, you know, things, t there's always a struggle. You know, weeks, months, years of debate, hard work, research, whatever it is, you end up with something. If someone thinks they have had a, a simple experience, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter how much hard work you put into it, and you never get to explain that to anyone, like, please forgive us, it was a lot of hard work. Is that perception someone has? Was their experience, was their interaction with you, your product, your company, whatever, was it, did it make them feel, oh, that was simple? And if it didn't, you lose, and if they do feel that, you win. Another important thing is that simplicity is how one generates love. Love to Steve was one of the most important things that he would talk to us about frequently. Our job as advertising people was to make customers love Apple. They had to have this emotional connection. Now, the, the designers and engineers obviously were doing that with the products, and it was our job to do it with the advertising. But the reason why Steve wanted to, to really feed this emotional connection was actually it was threefold. There were three reasons. One is that if people loved Apple, they'd keep buying stuff, which is obviously a good thing. But two, they would evangelize to their friends and their family and their colleagues because if their experience was that good, if they loved the products that much, they would sell them to other people. We all do that today. We fall in love with the product and we recruit our, our, those in our circles to our enthusiasm bubbles over. But last, if people really had that emotional connection, then they'd stick with Apple when the inevitable bad thing happens. And Steve was very aware that bad things happen, you know, despite the best of planning, things do happen. And if, if you know, the news becomes negative, when people feel that emotional attachment, they'll stick with you and they'll give you a break because, well, you know, they're a great company, I really love them, so they made a mistake, not the end of the world. Apple has always been very good at minimizing the words um, and as they do so, they humanize the words. They don't, when they talk, when they introduce the first iPod, which looks pretty funny by today's standards, but it had three features that really set it apart from all the other music players out there. It had a five gigabyte drive, which was huge. It had a firewire port for fast transfer to your computer and it had this amazing new click wheel interface, none of which they mentioned in any of their advertising. That stuff was all there on the, on the website if you wanted to go explore why it was a good thing. But to the world and all their advertising, all they said was a thousand songs in your pocket, which was revolutionary because uh, music players at that time, there were a ton of them, but they really didn't hold more than one or two CDs worth of music. And I remember it 
with some degree of pain because literally one week before this came out, I bought a brand new music player that held two CDs. <laughs> and I had to throw it away because I had to line up with all the other Apple fans to get my, my new iPod. But the idea of a thousand songs in your pocket, it's, it's so human. You know, there's, there's no technology there whatsoever. It's an idea that you can do something that you could never have done before, and it's going to be really, really fun for you. Um, and that's what they did. That, and iPod and iTunes became a huge revolution, really changed what Apple was all about.